Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi, and today we are playing everyone's beloved archetype, Princesses, with some queens, because we've gotten the addition of some queens with Rise of the Floodborne, and we have this little fellow here, Grand Duke, advisor of the king that gives our prince, princesses, kings, and queens all plus one power. So we're going to be playing four copies of him for fun, as it's a two drop that kind of glues together two archetypes. So we're going to be we're also going to be playing the princess that gives the archetype meaning, which is Moana of Montanui from the first chapter. Whenever she quests, you may ready all your princess characters, which means that they can fight, but they can't quest for the rest of the turn. All right. Well, if they're going to be questing the first turn and then they can get a challenge in, what if we can get some lore off of those challenges? Well, well, well. If it isn't, every princess's favorite pet tiger, Shere Khan. We're going to be playing four copies of Shere Khan the deck so that with Moana, uh, we can basically give them more lore off of the combats. Um, and that's basically the general idea behind the deck. We have a little combat booster with the Grand Duke. We have the lore booster off of Shere Khan whenever we're challenging. And the rest is mostly going to be princesses and queens. In particular, we've gotten one really neat princess that I've been waiting to try out in Snow White. The Wellwisher, 3-5, shift 4, and whenever she quests, we can pick up a card from our, or a character from our discard pile and put it back into our hand. We also have the Queen, Commanding Presence, which is one of the queens we'll be playing in our deck, as well as the Queen of Hearts, which is another powerful queen very powerful card allows us to draw cards whenever we go to combat and do some challenges one card per challenge uh, again goes well with moana's ability she's a queen uh, the other queen helps us with combat recursions we have card advantage <coughs> queens and princesses and yeah that's the queens in their final forms so we're also going to be playing the smaller versions of these princesses slash queens for the shift ability. In particular, we have the queen as a one drop and she can shift very cheaply, shift two for the big queen. So it can be a surprise or even if you don't have the big queen, just the threat of being able to shift the big queen and do that big combat swing, the plus four minus four that the big queen commanding presence allows us to do. The opponent has to respect that and it's going to be a lot more um, safe when it comes to questing and combats. Also going to be playing the impulsive ruler queen of hearts because she's a shift target for the bigger queen. <clears throat> she benefits from the stat boost of our duke and she's great at taking out these pesky lilos that are left undefended. And then we used to be playing Minnie Mouse in the old princess deck but now we have the pure upgrade Snow White Lost in Forest. 2-3, solid stats line, heal one of your characters for 2, and she's a shift target for a big Snow White. What's not to love? And come on, look at that attention to little Bambi. Alright, alright, so what do we have so far? So far we have 1, 2, 3 princesses, and 4 queens, <clears throat> and some support that's going to help with combat. So we need a bit more princesses. Let's go and take a look. Well, there's everyone's favorite princess. That gets included in every single Amber deck that we should not forget. Miss Rapunzel, gifted with healing. Most well, certainly deserves a place in that archetype, as well as any other Amber deck for that matter. As long as you have the budget and pixel born, everything is free. We're also going to be playing the Mari. Yeah, she's a villain princess, but a princess. Removal on a stick, 3-3, <clears throat> three, three, and you can just banish her to take out an opponent's threat. Very strong card. She can be revived thanks to Snow White's ability. Because she's a character. Alright, so what do we want next? Mulan, another big princess. We do like to have a bit more of these inkable 5 drops because they're better top decks in the late game. Also, she can improve the quest ability of all of our princesses if she takes out an opponent in challenge. And yeah, she was already one of the 
reasons to play ruby amber princesses in the past and is still a reason right now. Turn 48. Well, let's take a look at our curve. We have two drop, two drop, two drop, two drop. Oh wait, no, that's a one. So we're, we're mostly good here. Three, and then there's a bit of a hole. Pair of fours. Okay, so we you could use another three drop here to kind of iron out our curve. Ariel's a princess, but we don't have that much space left for songs. So I'd rather play something else. And we don't necessarily have to be playing princesses. And we are heavy on five drops. So what I'd like to play here is a foursome of docks, leader of the seven dwarfs. Kind of go with Snow White theme, but not really why we're playing it. We're playing it because you can play him on three. He's a two quester and allows you to ramp directly into these five drops. And yeah. Allows you to jump a step. And we want to play a two drop on turn two, so we don't really want to play a lantern there. So Doc fills in that three spot and ramp at the same time. Okay. Eight spots remaining. Cinderella can fill in some of our four drop. Don't like her that much. She's probably gonna get inked most of the time, but we'll we'll play her in two copies. Also mostly looking for flex spots here. There is an action that I'm looking for. Something that can swing combat mat. Where are you, little action? There it is. Painting the roses red. Also, it's probably something that the Queen of Hearts has been singing. So it belongs in the deck. Yes, Lorcana Logic. Now the reason why I'm playing this is it's a nice flex spot, which is going to allow us to get more combats in. In particular, we can even target our own characters with this to get them weaker. So we can get some challenge in with Shurkan in play. Then we can activate Moana's ability, get them to challenge again, gaining more lore. Or if, even if we have double Moana with a shirt count or double shirt count, we can kind of get stupid amounts of lore by targeting our own characters or target the opponent's characters or just sing it to draw a card. Fairly versatile card in our deck. And we need four copies of another card. Oh, there, there's actually a princess we can put in. Rapunzel Sunshine, one four, and we can exert her to heal two damage from a chosen character. If she becomes a 2-4 off of a duke, it's actually very good stats for 2-drop with a nice ability. And she'll fit nicely to just wrap up our flexible slots. Maybe we can thin her down to 2 copies and play some other flexible spell of your choosing. Or even cut her out together and place uh, whatever your preferences are for your flex spots. But I'll be playing 4 copies of Rapunzel Sunshine. She's going to brighten our day and hopefully heal some of our characters and do a good job. And there we have it, princesses and queens in Ruby Amber are lots of fun, lots of nice abilities, card draw. Uh, we do have some removal with Namari. The list feels fairly well balanced, so all that remains is to look at it in action with some games. See what we get. Mari, Queen of Hearts, Moana, Sher Count, Sher Count, Doc, Sher Count. Sher Count for days. <coughs> well, that's interesting in its own right. I think we're going to send the Mari back and Doc and keep the triple Sher Count. Find back our Namari. Fuddle and Lilo is what we've seen so far. Ink is Cinderella and pass the turn back. Let's not give a hint to our opponent that we're playing a Queen of Hearts, which is conveniently already highlighted. Come on, no Simba. Pinocchio. Okay. That will fares very well for us. Let's ink that queen. And we go for a surprise counterattack. Featuring Queen of Hearts. And that's kind of a perfect use case for her. Just the surprise two drop taking out the unprotected Lilo. And you see, you can see the Queen of Hearts just laughing. Like that guy in The Simpsons. 
Ha ha. And, well, Lilo gets torn apart. Then Pinocchio. Ooh, Pinocchio just remains exerted. You're going to let me take out your tree quester just like that? You shouldn't do that. All right, well. It's Inkadoc. And shift the Queen of Hearts. So our Queen of Hearts is going to survive the challenge and we'll get to draw a card in the exchange. No, oh, pause and turn back. Maybe this, this game isn't so much about princesses as it is about the queen. The queen doing some heavy lifting. All right, here comes a goat. 4-3 draws a card, and we find a Snow White healer. That's a very convenient pickup now. I don't think the 50 sure cap plan is going to pan out after all. So we're going to go with Namari, then I'll pass the turn back. Removal on the stick. Or really, swords. Merlin quests. And it's time for Merlin the Rabbit to come out. And then our Lila. <clears throat> right, then we find a Moana. We do have. Well, she's queen. So for five, well, we're going to ink one of the Moanas. We don't really need the double. Although double Moana with double shirt count could be fun. Do you think I want to play the Moana? I guess I have to take out the Merlin and draw a card off of the Queen. Oh, you find another shirt count. That's nice. We have cards and our opponent has lore. Merlin Bunny quests, Lilo also quests. And there's a snake bounce back. Oh, the rabbit, interesting. Opponent trying to get some more cards. Find a big snow white. In this particular junction, I like healing the Mulan. Then we're going to go with the mass shuriken plan after all. So Snow White is gonna heal the Queen. Queen can have another combat against Lilo. I should have played a shuriken first. My mistake. Then play the shirt count. Yeah, the opponent can't take out Moana, so he quest. Let's go with the heavy questing here. How much does Snow White quest for? I can activate her ability to pick something back up, and then use Moana. One keeps on bouncing the bunny. It's a question of the bunny and the snake. Madam Min, Merlin, Madam Min, Merlin, Madam Min, Merlin. Hmm, kind of want some M&Ms right now. All right. So, opponent doesn't have anything exerted. Five power on the battlefield. We'll keep the, the double shuriken hidden for now. We can shift the Snow White. whenever she quests. 
think having another princess in play would be probably the most impactful. What do we have in our discard? Queen, Queen, Amari. Could drop a small queen if we shift the big Snow White. I think that's what we want to do. Shift the big Snow White. Time to quest. Pick back up. Small Queen of Hearts. I don't think we need the Grand Duke here. Off to the ink. We'll resolve a Queen of Hearts. And Mana will quest protecting Snow White. I will pass the turn back. Opponent now at 13, 14. And keeping out the bouncing train. I probably do want to keep on highlighting one of the Snow Whites. Then Maleficent. Opponent can quest for five on board. And I think our opponent has a goat. So we really have to take out that Madame Min. All right, so we're at eight. We can quest for a seven. So three off of Moana, two off of Snow White. So that's five, brings us to 13. If we play double Shurkan, we can get two attacks in. So we can gain an extra six. That brings us to 19. Technically, we would have another attack in with Snow White. Oh, we can pick up the Queen again. We can pick up the Queen again. I think we have this. I think we can go Shurka. Shurka. Sack the Queen to Madame Min. Get Tree Lore off of the Shurkans. Activate Snow White. Pick back up the Queen of Hearts. As I can quest with Moana. Go up to 16, ready Snow White. Yeah, I can play back the... Actually, yeah, this, this just looks more epic. Let's ink the Mulan, play the Queen of Hearts again. Back for another challenge. Gain three lore off of Shurka, up to 19. And Shurka gets the quest. 20. On the dot for a very fancy Shurkan multi rush. Uh, just lots of cool princesses and her tigers' abilities taking the game. Let's see what we get Shurkan, Shurkan, Snow White, Mulan, Mulan, Shurkan, Queen. So if I send Snow White and Queen, I have a full house. Probably don't want that Snow White this early. It's a bit too many tigers, too many Mulans. I'll keep one of each. And try to dig for two drop, playing a ton of them, and we find one. All right, with this particular hand, I'm not too fond of my four drop Cinderella. She's going to hit the ink pile. Plan here is to resolve a turn two Grand Duke. Opponent inks a Queen of Hearts. Find another Namari, which we unfortunately cannot ink. So we're going to ink the Queen for now. And resolve the Grand Duke. It's going to be giving our Prince, Princesses, King, and Queens all plus one. Most of our deck, really. Opponent is sitting with a Karma Chameleon, just a little 1-1 one -one that hasn't triggered Camouflage yet. So we're playing against a Ruby, Ruby Purple deck. 
amethyst. We find painting the roses red. Not exactly what I want right now. So I'm going to send Mulan to the ink and resolve Shurka. And that'll be our turn. It's now little Pascal as evasive as long as Queen remains on the board. We'll gain some lore out of our combat. Thanks to Princess's Tiger over here. Find a queen. Queen's a nice inkable character for now. We'll resolve in the Mari, which will allow us to deal with most threats that the opponent can place. And Shurkal's not doing much on this board state. Do we dare to quest? Opponent can't Maui next turn, so I see a little downside. I'd rather keep sure on the battlefield, but I want my opponent to start exerting some of the other characters so we can get good combats in. Especially since we're sitting with a painting the roses red. Opponent flashing us a Maui before sending it to the ink pile. Alright, that's a rabbit of card draw that enters the battlefield. Let me find a Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts is a nice inkable that we could play. I mean that we can ink. Fortunately, we can't take out that Pascal, and odds our opponent has another Maui. No real point in taking out that Merlin. It's unlikely that the opponent has to be prepared at the ready. We can land a Moana at least. Let's see what the opponent does. That little Pascal just keeps on questing. Arthur comes in. That might be worth sacrificing the Mari over. Oh, it's a Meta Min. Meta Min deck with a bunch of combat tricks. All right, see where this is coming from. Opponent still doesn't want to exert anything. Send that Queen of Arts to the ink, I think. Questing with that Moana is tempting, especially since she's a 2-6 now. I think I might just do that. So we have a bit of trickery here. We can quest with Namari, quest with Moana, activate Moana's ability to ready Namari. Then we can use Namari's ability to take out that Arthur. That's a bit of a threat. Just a little bit of a bonus here. Land a second Namari. And we're sitting with painting the roses red. No real use case for that right now, so we'll just pass the turn back to your opponent. Slight visual bug happening after a temporary disconnect, but the game is still alive. Opponent keeps on questing with Pascal. We have an interesting game here, so I don't want to sacrifice all that just because of a small visual bug. And it also quests with Merlin the Rabbit. So it feels like the, the turn of truth is coming. I should highlight Moana, Queen of Princesses. Whenever she quests, we may ready all our other princesses. 
But he can't quest for the rest of the turn, but he can challenge. And with sure count, that can generate a lot of lore. As long as there, I have something to challenge. But your opponent hasn't been letting us much of that. Opponent just quests with everything. Alright. If that's how you want to play it. It's like our opponent's getting ready to cast a be prepared. So we won't give them too much option. Painting the rose is red. You will both lose one power. We draw another shirt count. That's interesting. Quest for one with Namari. Moana's gonna quest. Ready Namari. And now, if we double sure count, we can get two, six, eight more lore up to 17. It's nice, but it's not quite enough. All right, so we'll play the other painting, The Roses Red, just to get free takedowns on these characters. And we're going to take all the takedowns we can. A little bit of ink with each challenge. Three challenges, gaining some lore. Three challenges, gaining three lore. Now we're very likely to run into be prepared. But that's okay. That's why we're keeping some cards in hand. <clears throat> Quest with Pascal. Ink and... Wait for it. There it is. Be prepared. As telegraphed. And now we need to resolve some more threats. Which are going to come in the form of Namari and Snow White. Be prepared again. Hmm. This one's a bit more problematic. It's okay, we've got double tigers. Double tiger for double success. Eventually our opponent's gonna run out of be prepared. Eventually. Magical keyword. Elsa, queen of freezing. Making sure that we really can't do anything and we get controlled. And we find a big Snow White. That is quite an interesting pickup. Scar comes in. All right. Opponent is not messing around. Big bag Scar. Wait, not that. Not this one. That one. Six five rush. Whenever he banishes a character in the challenge, he comes back. But he can't quest after that. Opponent decided to leave him exerted for some reason. Maybe a misclick. So Elsa's gonna try and finish the job and go after Shirt Count. We have Snow White's ability. So it's time to highlight Snow White, Queen of the Princesses. And it's about the third time I've said that. They're all princesses. There's no queen here, except for the queen. She's a queen that princesses don't like. And dragons sometimes. Is that the same one? No, that's Maleficent. All right, the opponent bounced back Elsa. So whenever Snow White quests, we may return a character from our discard to our hand. Do have some nice options. Moana can quest for a lot. Fortunately, Snow White doesn't survive a challenge from Scar. Namari can also be used to take out one of the big threats, like Elsa. I definitely want a quest here. The question is, what do I pick up? Moana is quite tempting, but I 
think I'm gonna resort to Namari. Knowing that the opponent is going to go with Elsa, I'm going to force a trade. So Elsa will double freeze, Scar will take out Snow White, and Madame Min is going to have to trade with Namari. And we'll hold back the second Snow White in hand. I just want to avoid a situation by playing the Snow White where Elsa will freeze both of our characters, Scar can take out Snow White and Snow White, and Madame Min takes out Namari, or you just lose the Snow White for no reason. We're at 14, so we're getting close to lethal. Ooh, opponent quests with Scar and Madame Min. Opponent is deciding to race here. Can quest for six next turn. I'll go with our bigger drop, the Queen of Hearts. I mean, the characters are actually frozen. So there is no real reason to challenge them quite this turn. So in retrospect, I agree with our opponent's decision. That was wise. Now they're going to get taken out, though. Inking some friends. And our opponent already has enough friends on the battlefield. Alright. Questing with Scar, replaying Scar. And then going with the free takeout. Balance and kill. It's effective. Suddenly the opponent is on the cusp of winning. There's very little we can do about it. We can go and draw some cards. Because why not? But it's not enough. And so we'll have to concede. That was a cool game. Got controlled. But other than that, Princesses did their job, got a few extra points of lore here and there, but it just wasn't enough to survive the double be prepared back to back, followed by an Elsa. We get a pair of Rapunzel's Queen, Namari, Doc, Namari, and Mulan. We'll send the Namari back. We'll send one of Rapunzel away, and the rest seems fine. Decent curve as we find a Tiger King, Queen of Hearts, Moana. Seems like a well-balanced hand. I'd prefer a big queen or a small, a small queen of hearts or a big pure queen. But we'll take what we're dealt. I think Mulan. Go with a small queen. At the very least, representing pressure. The threat of that two shifting. Opponent doesn't have to know that we don't have it. It's our little secret. One plays a stitch, and we find Snow White. So that's our only two drop. At least that's available. Sink a sure can this time. All right, Snow White, do your stuff. Just stare at the face of Stitch. And you won't quest with the queen, continuing with the threat of shifting. Just gonna get into a big staring contest with the opponent. He's playing amber at the very least. Haven't picked up on another color or ink yet. But we'll see. I suspect steel. Singing the praise of Amber Steel Song. Looking for Big Stitch, maybe. 
But after I'm done with you, you're going to need a big stitch. Pawn goes to quest. Queen to the ink and passing the turn. Oh, we do find big queen. That is interesting. I think I'd like to resolve a dock at this point, which means Moana has to go away. <clears throat> we can take the free challenge off of Snow White, free quest off of the Queen, and we'll resolve a dock, giving us the option of Queen of Hearts or Rapunzel next turn. Depending on what our opponent does. Here comes the steal. Tinkerbell to the rescue. Gonna take the opportunity to ink a Mulan. <clears throat> um, Rapunzel is gonna heal our Snow White. What am I afraid of here? Tinkerbell? The big Tinkerbell shifting on top here? <coughs> if that happens, everything takes one. There's a combat and I lose two characters, probably Doc and Snow White. I'd keep the Queen. Then I have Queen and Rapunzel. I can go Queen on Backswing. Double challenge, draw two cards. That's fine. So I'll just quest with everything. It's a little too early for Grab Your Sword. I've gotten some cards off of Rapunzel. There she is, big tink, making big things happen. Trying to contest our undeniably powerful board position, full of princesses, just jolly little Snow White, very happy Doc, Rapunzel just super happy, not gloomy at all, and the queen just, well, queen had to go away, really. Queen and Doc go down. Which means that we have to follow our game plan, ink the small queen, and go with the queen of hearts. Just gonna allow us to take out that Tinkerbell and draw some cards in exchange for the characters that we're throwing away. As planned. It's not the best. That was the worst case scenario. Ooh, double Queen of Hearts. That's always interesting. So steal, you have to be careful about grab your sword. We also have to respect a whole new world. Can you go four and one, five and one? I think we send the shirt kind of away. Then we go five and one. Wait, Moana, which can withstand a lot of grab your swords, and the queen, which is going to be our shifting target. Still survives the Tinkerbell ping. The opponent grabs their sword, then we're, we're left with Moana, so we're still in a decent state. And the opponent would have to tap out for that. Stitch Rockstar comes in. <clears throat> it's a powerful card. Powerful card indeed. Alright, well, I'll just resolve more stuff on the board. Now we're a bit weaker to grab your sword this turn, but I mean we've gained a lot of ink and we're pressuring our opponent quite heavily. And grab your sword doesn't deal with Namari. Your opponent would have to grab your sword followed by a Tinkerbell. In which case Moana lives. But that would put us in a bad spot. I'll have to admit. Only world. Sung with Stitch. Opponent still has 7 ink, but no more singer. And we have the threat of Namari on the battlefield. Which your opponent cannot overcome as they resign this game. I hope that you've enjoyed this video featuring princesses and queens. 
everyone's favorite archetype. Is it one of your favorite archetypes? Let me know in the comments below whether you like princesses and queens and whether you want to see more princess style decks in the future. I hope that you've enjoyed the games as much as I have, especially with the Shurikan combat mat. I think it was a lot of fun, especially that game one. In terms of retrospect, when we're looking for the flex spots, I slightly regret putting in the four copies of Rapunzel, since we're a little short on removal, and evasive characters are a bit of a, tr uh, of a problem, as well as some stronger late game threats, so I think we can benefit from a little bit removal. But outside of that, the deck performed pretty well. It's definitely a lot of fun to play. Lots of triggers, lots of abilities, lots of characters in play and decisions to make. I'd highly encourage that you try it out as long as you like the princesses and queens archetype. It's a blast to play. And let me know if you find any good upgrades to the deck and whether you'd like to see more princesses deck or more queens deck. I've probably already gone over that. Already told the audience? Well, now I've told you twice. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up the video, subscribe if you if you aren't already a subscriber, and have enjoyed the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.